Hey guys, Smoky Day 2. Um, we're going to be doing a combination of lecture and some demonstrations. And um, the first one's going to be uh, nickels in the canister and also the beads in a bottle. And we'll also continue with a little bit of lecture notes after this as well. So this is part of the handout that I had given to you guys in class. So it's the 3.2 or in section 3.2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting a canister of nickels in popcorn. And ask yourself this, what will it do? Will it sink to the bottom or will it stay on the top? So those are a couple possibilities. The first possibility is that this canister that are filled with nickels could sink and it could sink and if it does sink, that means that it is more dense than the surrounding environment. So things that are denser um, are going to, to sink. The other possibility is that this could float. And if it floats, like it floats on the surface, that means that it's less dense, like a hot air balloon floating in the air. It's less dense. So if it's less dense, what that means is that it has buoyancy. If you're on the ocean and you're trying to anchor and you're looking for the anchor spot, um, oftentimes they're indicated by a buoy. And so a buoy has buoyancy. It is less dense than the surrounding environment, therefore it's floating on the surface of the water. So it is called positive buoyancy. When something is floating, it is positively buoyant. What's the opposite of positively buoyant? It is negatively buoyant. So buoyant means to float, so negative floating, negative buoyancy. Okay, negative flotation means it's going to sink. There's a third possibility though. It could stay in the middle. And if it stays in the middle, that means it's going to have the same density as the surrounding environment. So it could have the same density. And that has a special name. If we have things that are positive, we have things that are negative, the other possibility is going to be neutral. Neutral buoyancy. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is to stop from this video right now and go to the video titled Nickels in Popcorn and then watch that. Do not go on until you watch that video. So I want you to press pause now. Okay, hopefully you've come back and you've watched that video. And what we have is we have nickels. Okay, we put nickels in here, and we have this canister. I need to inform you in case if you're completely perplexed what just happened in this demonstration. There were actually two canisters. There was the canister that was filled with nickels that I put in the top, and there was actually another canister with the $1 bill that was sort of floating in the middle. Now let's take a look at these canisters. These both have the same volume because they're both made of the same canister. However, which of these has more mass, the nickels or the dollar? Okay, the nickels have more mass compared to the dollar over here. So if we look at the formula, density is equal to mass over volume, and density is equal to mass over volume, if I increase the mass, okay, what's that going to do to my density? Okay, now this is the opposite of what we had. Previously we were looking at the volume. Now we're increasing the top and the numerator. When we increase the top, we're actually going to be increasing the value. For example, let's say this has a volume of, of 2, and it's going to stay at a volume of 2. And let's say I increase the mass from 2, and I go to 4. I'm increasing the mass. 2 over 2 is 1. 4 over 2 is 2. What happens when I increase the mass? When I increase the numerator on the top, it increases the total value. So it's going to increase the density. If 
I increase the density, things that are more dense are going to sink. Okay, now over here, we are lowering the density. Okay, we're going from two over two to perhaps one over two. I am lowering the mass, and the volume's not changing. When I decrease this, I go from a value of two over two, which is one, to one over two, which is 0.5. I go from one to 0.5. So if I decrease my mass, I'm going to decrease my density. If I decrease my density, it's less dense, therefore it's going to float. So the nickels sank to the bottom, the dollar which was on the bottom actually floated to the top. Now what I'd like you to do is go to the beads in the bottle video. Don't go on until you watch the beads in the bottle video. Okay, and then we'll continue on from there. So pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you've watched that video and we're now coming back to the explanation of, of this. What I'd like to do is, here we have the bottle. We're going to have a, a before, we're going to have an after scenario. Now, what we have is we have a couple of these white beads. Let's just draw three of them. Here's the white beads. Okay, we'll just say that these are going to be white. And we have the blue beads that are underneath them. We said that they're more dense. We're just going to draw one, two, three of them. And it's true, the blue is denser and the white is less dense. But what you don't know about this demonstration is actually there's not just one fluid in here, there's actually two fluids. If you remember from a previous um, video or a previous uh, a day, we had a demonstration where we had alcohol and we had salt water. And down below here is some salty water, and up above here is, is some alcohol. But for the purpose of the demonstration, we're just gonna say that it's water. These actually, pure water would mix with this, but it's actually some, some salt water. But let's say the density of this is 1.0, and the density of alcohol is about 0.80. What do these densities need to be? These white beads need to be denser than what this is, but it has to be less dense than this. It turns out that these beads are approximately a density of about 0.85. Having a higher number means that they sink in this layer, but they're less dense than this, the layer below, so they're going to be floating on top of that. The blue beads have a density of about 0.95, which means that they're floating in this layer right here, because they're less dense than 1.0, but 0.95 compared to 0.80, that means it's more dense. It's more dense than the liquid, and it's more dense than these beads here. So the blue beads are going to be at the top of this water column. The white beads are going to be at the bottom of the alcohol column. So here's a before, okay, here's before. And here is going to be the after. When you mix it, these liquids are going to mix in with each other for a few seconds, and the density is going to be 0 0.90. It's going to be the average of those two. What's going to happen to your white beads? Your white beads are going to float on top of that. What's the density of the white beads? The density of the white beads is 0.85. It's less dense than this mixture. What's the density of the blue beads? The blue beads is 0.95. It is denser than this. However, what happens is the two liquids begin to separate, and the bottom floods with the 1.0 water. And what that's going to do is it's going to start to push the less dense material up. What happens is the alcohol, which is less dense, starts to float towards the surface. What happens is its density is 0 0.80, and this is actually denser, so these begin to sink. These begin to sink, these begin to float, and then they meet in the middle when the two layers have separated themselves again. So that's the explanation of the beads in the bottle.
Now, if you go on to the next page, the next page is going to look something like this. It's the gas density. Now, let's say that we have the same volume for all gases for this formula, so we're going to be changing the mass. If you look on the periodic table, you don't have a periodic table, but if you're here in the room, it would say in, on the periodic table, the mass of helium is 4.0026. I'm looking at it right now. We're just going to round it to a nice 4. Okay? Now, nitrogen has a mass of 14. One nitrogen has a mass of 14, but N2, we're going to take, compare helium and we're going to compare air. So air has a combination of both nitrogen and oxygen. So we have 14 for each nitrogen, but we have two nitrogens, so 14 times 2 will give me 28. Air is about 20% uh, oxygen, and oxygen weighs, I'm looking at the periodic table, 15.999, and that's 16. So two 16s will weigh about 32. Now, since it's 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen, 80% of the weight is going to be based upon this 28. 20% of the weight or mass will depend upon this 32. So if I multiply 0 0.8 by 28, I get 22.4. If I multiply the 20% of the weight for the oxygen, I get 6.4. When I add those two together, it's 22.4 and 6.4. This gives me 28.8. What does this mean? Well, let's compare this mass compared to this mass. Air is about seven times denser than helium. That means air is going to sink and helium is going to rise towards the surface. Let's do something similar for carbon dioxide. If I look up at the periodic table, carbon weighs 12. Okay, I have two oxygens again. Two oxygens weigh 32. How much does each carbon dioxide weigh? When I add those two together, I get 44. So how does 44 compare to this right here? Carbon dioxide is about 1.5 times denser than air. I'll have another demonstration with carbon dioxide for you guys when we get back. Last of the gases is going to be called sulfur hexafluoride. There's one sulfur. Sulfur has a mass of 32. Fluorine is a mass of 19. When you multiply 19 by 6, this gives you 114. When you add those together, you get 146. We'll compare this to air. This is five times denser than air. So I will have um, a demonstration in class to demonstrate the density of carbon dioxide. And I'll also have a, a video to share with you on sulfur hexafluoride. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and post that video for sulfur hexafluoride for you guys to see online. So you guys can go ahead and see the sulfur hexafluoride. That's it for today.